Hi Randy, the Mobile Home Guy here again. So today we're gonna to look at a Coleman furnace. We can see this here is the model number. So it's a 7000, so it's a 7700856. And uh, 7000 numbers are pretty good on these old furnaces as far as model numbers. So 7686 or those kinds of things. Those are typically the models that you find on these old Coleman's. Um, the valve or the regulator looks like this here. And uh, we're gonna to be, today we're gonna to look at how to change a thermocoupler, maybe how to light it also. Um, so we'll go over that. Okay, today we're gonna to replace the thermocoupler on a furnace, it's a Coleman furnace. In order to do that, we're gonna to have to get the screws out back here and along the bottom. There's six of them that we're gonna to have to take out. Um, for, but for now, if it has this type of valve with this type of bracket, we only need to take this one out and then this one right here out. Okay, this one there out. So that one right there, you can see it isn't holding onto this plate. So we'll look at that. Also, we're gonna to have to um, take the pilot tube off, which is that little nut right there is holding it into the valve. It's a 7 16 And then we're also going to have to disconnect the wires. So this one here has them actually screwed on. Um, some of them will be on a spade. So don't worry about it if you get these ones backwards. So if that white goes to the black and the black to the white, that doesn't matter. Just make sure that one goes there, one goes there, and it doesn't matter which ones. But please make sure before you do that to uh, turn it off the power up here. So you're just looking for that on off switch for there. And again, if it's a uh, flex line, you're okay. Um, but if it's on a main uh, main line, so it's hard, hard piped in, you'll have to um, disconnect. So you'll have to turn the um, the uh, the gas line off right there. You have to turn that shut off off, okay? So let's look and see how that works. Okay, so we've disconnected the thermocoupler here. We've also just taken this little piece out and it kind of has a little little rigidity to it, so try not to pull on it too hard or anything. You don't have to be super delicate with it, but try not to pull on it too much. We can see that the valve's almost falling out now, so we took a screw out here and a screw in the bottom. So we kind of just go straight out with it, and we can kind of set it down basically like this. And we can see that there's only, there's uh, two, two big holes two small holes. These are the ones that actually hold the valve on right there. And then we can see we can take these off now, take these rest of these off now, and that this piece will come out. This is the piece we need to get out here in order to replace that uh, thermal coupler. But this for now we can just set off to the side and we'll deal with that here in a few minutes. So now what we need to do is we need to take this screw off, these two off the bottom, and these two that we left off there. Um, if you want to now, since it's sitting in place, seeing how this thermal coupler is uh, it goes through this little plate right here. You can take this screw and this little screw off because this has to come off anyway to get the thermal coupler out. Right here is the thermal coupler. So take this screw off, this screw off first, and then these ones off right there. That one and that one, okay? Leave those two alone. Okay, you can see that we've, repla we've removed uh, this little plate here. This plate here is what, what goes on right there and holds these pieces in plate. We took the two uh, pieces off of there, set that to the side. We've taken the screw, two screws off the top and the rest of the two screws off the bottom. So we can see that this plate is kind of, just kind of sitting there waiting to try and come out. This is a very kind of a cruddy one. It kind of, you have to drop it down in. And I'll show you why here in a second. So you have to drop it down in, turn it, and see this is kind of what we're looking for. You can work on it right here. See here's the thermal coupler right here. You can work on it right here. But it's not too much more work to get it kind of all the way out. And see this is what it looks like. Okay. So what you're doing is when you're putting it inside of there is you're turning it this way to get it in. And once you get this out and then you push it straight in basically and then you're turning it up in like that. Does that make sense? So you're kind of pull a tiny bit out. You're trying to get this little edge right there past that. Pull it out a little bit, turn it, okay? Kind of a little, little, little shove there. Kind of straight out. And then you're kind of, just work it carefully and you can work on it right there if you want. Or turn it out, okay? And this is kind of what we're looking at. This little piece here. That's the thermal coupler in there. You know, it's probably hard to see there. But uh, the end of the pilot tube, so that's where the gas comes out that you ignite. This is the thermocoupler, spreader plate, and there's where all the gas comes out and ignites once it hits that flame that's right here, okay? Okay, so we're going to replace the thermocoupler, which is this tube right here. 
This is the pilot tube. This is the thermocoupler. Um, we can just kind of pull it out if we want really, really hard. Sometimes it doesn't come out really, really awesome. So you have to grind that top off. You can kind of pull this plate right here back over. So see this plate right here, this little uh, square plate, kind of pull it off of it. Now we get a really clear view of what's going on and we need to pull this out. So you pull straight down on that and get this piece out by pulling it out. Okay, so pulling hard on this, this thing comes out like that. Sometimes I've had them to where you have to kind of pull or I've had to grind this top off because that gets really burry up there and it gets about this far and that's about it. So I'll kind of push it back in, chop this top off and it'll come off a little easier that way. All right, so with your thermocoupler comes a few of these different fittings. So they're all different for different applications on different burner assemblies. So this here is the burner assembly. And you can see right here these two pieces. So what this does is this piece goes up inside of there. So this goes inside of there like that. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to help it stay right positioned right there. So the one that we need on this particular model is this one here, this little piece here. It goes first off what you're going to do is you're going to take this piece out and you're going to put this piece inside of that and we'll look at what that looks like. Okay so we can see we got the piece in there and it kind of is designed to lock itself in there once you push it inside of there and then what we're going to do is we're going to push these the thermocoupler in there and we're going to push it all the way in there so that it actually locks itself in there and this one is designed to push up right there like that and see that holds it right next to the pilot tube right where we need it so it holds it right there and these two pieces work together so this right here can just dangle no big deal um, this is for a different application if there was a bigger hole there that screws in there sometimes um, so all those fittings have different meanings for different applications but this one had that working right there so nice new thermocoupler right there don't forget to put this piece back over and bend that on place and then we'll go over some other stuff you can put a little couple little wire pieces on there. The old thermocoupler wrapped around there holds it up in there just fine. Okay, you can see how I wrapped a little piece around there if you need it. I'm just kind of showing you what you can do if you need it. Sometimes wrap it that tighter. Just, but just a little idea, kind of holding it on there because this thing doesn't get hot, obviously, obviously hot enough to melt this aluminum piece here. So this piece on there holding that up there is a little added support sometimes I like to give it. Okay, we got this piece back on there inside there with a little bit of a hassle. So we're going to now put it all back together and screw them all in, okay? We're just gonna put this one here, this one here, this one, and this screw back together. We've already put the plate back in there to kind of hold the thermocoupler in place there, okay? Okay, we've got four of the screws back in there corresponding with where uh, it holds the bracket on in place. So uh, we wanna leave the ones off that don't need it, which is that corner one there and that bottom one there. Um, I like to do, I like to put this kind of in there and then kind of do the nut there on the side when it's loose so I can kind of have more play with it. So don't screw it in and then try to put the pilot tube nut on there. I like to kind of do that before. I kind of put the pipe in the back and kind of push it on and then before I put the screws in, I'll kind of tighten that nut and make sure we're not getting cross-threaded. So we'll do that now, again at 7 16 Okay, so we've gotten the, the nut on there, we tightened it. You're now gonna wanna over crank it, just kinda get it really super tight and then crank it a little bit. Um, kinda do, give it some muscle, but don't like super crank it tight. I know that's kinda weird, you know, and then use some bubbly water. I, I actually like to use just straight dish soap on there. Hold a little rag underneath of there and then put, the, put it on there using your finger or something like that to put that on there. Um, then put it on there, it'll kind of make a pool and if there's any bubbles you'll know it's needing to be tighter. Get a rag and clean it off. I do have a little tester so I don't usually use that soap anymore. But uh, anyway, so now we're going to move on to the thermocoupler, making sure we're doing a little arc. Don't like kind of crank, don't uh, make sure not to, of course, uh, kink it or anything. So we're going to get it and we're going to put it right in there. And they say you want to go quarter turn past hand tight, okay? So get it in there and then uh, if it doesn't tighten up with a wrench after a quarter turn, keep going a little bit. But uh, quarter turn past hand tight is the rule for that. Okay, now we should just uh, be ready to light the pilot. It's all back together again. Everything's good to go. So we put our knob back here onto the pilot position. Um, we'll know we're on the right position because if I'm here, I can't get it. But where it says pilot there, 
we'll be able to push it down. We can see that. Now when I'm doing this, I'm actually letting gas out inside. So we want to be really careful when we do have this pushed down that our match is already inside there. So we know we got in the right position. Now what I like to do is I'll get some piece like this here and I will wedge that. Sorry for that. We'll wedge that right inside of there like that. And we can see I've already really lit the pilot here on this one. But what we'll do is we'll put our igniter in there or our match way in there. And you can see right where that needs to go. It's in there about 12, 16 inches right inside this area here, right past the little tube and beside the square there, right past that in that little V. I'll put a match or I have a little igniter that I use for those things. So, um, but once your match is in there, you will push down here and then once that lights, you can pull your match out, but then you hold this button down here for about 20 seconds and then you let go and see if you still have pilot. You do still have pilot then don't forget to turn this to the on position. I have a lot of people that forget to do that, to forget to put that to the on position there. And then we're gonna close our flap. Basically, as soon as you can, you wanna close the flap once you see the, uh, the, um, the pilot going, you wanna close that up. Then we can turn it on and then the thermostat up and we should have a big roaring flame inside of there after that.